Good morning. Uh, my name is Dean Philpot. I was uh, fortunate enough to start a business in uh, 1987 called Nonsense. Nonsense was about uh, selling natural zeolites to uh, people for all different types of uses. One of the first things we did, and we were we were relatively successful right out of the get-go, but one of the things we were able to do is we were able to hire a, a PhD petrologist, a rock doctor, to study uh, uses for natural zeolite. Uh, there had been other people that have tried had, had tried the business at uh, at, the, at the time, but nobody had ever been successful or made a profit at it. And uh, that was one of the benefits we had was we were able to hire Dr. Paul Roper. Uh, one of the first things Dr. Roper did was uh, travel to a conference in Cuba. And at this conference in Cuba, he was able to sit down and talk to Russian scientists that were uh, experts as zeolites and were uh, very, very uh, primary in implementing uh, procedures after the Chernobyl incident. One thing you're going to find out is if you if you do a little study or you you, you check out the, the old videos of Chernobyl, you're going to notice that people are helicopters flying over and people dumping out uh, all types of materials. Well, one of the primary materials they used was natural zeolite. It was a it was a zeolite talk called uh, clinotelite. Uh, clinotelite was also added to uh, things like candy bars for uh, children to uh, help them eliminate the radioactive nuclei from their body. It's very, very effective, in, uh, uh, especially with cesium. Uh, and they also used it. Uh, they also used it to filter milk. Uh, they added it to uh, animal feed in uh, uh, places like Lapland to uh, remove uh, remove the radio uh, radionuclei from the uh, uh, bodies of the uh, of the animals so they could continue to use the milk and, and the, the, the meat byproducts. Uh, and uh, this this of telite is is real interesting stuff. Now what what you want to do or what I do, let me let me let me put it that way because I'm not a doctor and I can't really give you any medical recommendations. Let me tell you what I'm doing. Uh, I buy a product called Sweet PZD. It's available at places like Tractor Supply, and if they don't have it on hand, they can order it for you. Um, it's called a stall freshener. The, the type of zeolite that you want to use is a product called Clinotelite. Uh, I'll spell that. I'll, I'll put it on the screen here for you so you can do a little further research on it. And please don't believe anything I say, just uh, just use it as a stimulus to go do some more additional research. But what I'll do is I'll take <clears throat> about uh, uh, five or ten pounds of the zeolite that I, that I buy, the sweet PZD. I will put it in a uh, shallow baking dish, stick it in the oven, uh, turn it on about 400 degrees for 45 minutes to an hour. And in, in the middle of the process, I'll crack the oven for just a minute and let the steam rise. Uh, this, there's water in this product, or interstitial, interstitial water in it, and uh, the uh, heating process eliminates that. In fact, zeolite means boiling rock. It's a, it's a volcan, uh, volcanic ash that is crystallized in an old lake bed, and over the, over the centuries, uh, uh, You've had uh, uh, it's been purified by rainwater, and uh, a lot of the uh, uh, constituents have been have been you know basically cleaned up. And this is a relatively clean product, or a very clean product as far as as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this particular product that we use comes out of uh, Winston, New Mexico, and uh, you could you could like I said you can find out about it, and the. I've got no connections with these people anymore. Uh, the sweet peas is just a, is just a good source of this, uh, this light that's readily available and it's cheap. And uh, my, you know, uh, I would, uh, I'd go out and buy at least a couple bags of it, uh, put it in storage, and uh, bake out some for water purification if the need ever arises. Uh, I'd use a tablespoon or a teaspoon in a uh, large container of water, stir it up real good, let it settle out, let the, the heavy stuff settle on the bottom, take maybe the first three quarters, 
uh, for for drinking water. I throw the rest out on my garden, uh, the the residual out on my garden to, to use it to help clean that up too. So you've got a you've got a good bang for your buck there. Uh, but uh, Dr. Roper, you know, came back with uh, all this information. I've seen a lot of this information converted on the internet, and and I would research climate telite. I would research Chernobyl. I would research uh, Russian uses of natural zeolite. Um, I would uh, uh, also research uh, British nuclear, bought 6 million metric tons of it a few years back to, uh, to, to purify the water coming out of uh, their uh, uh, nuclear plants. And, uh, and it, that particular product was modified a little bit, but I wouldn't worry about that because uh, your effectiveness won't be as high on uh, strontium but uh, uh, it takes very little. It, it, it would take a very small amount to uh, filter it out. Uh, filter it out. Uh, I was blessed to be able to travel the world and show people and uh, show people about uh, the uses for natural zeolites. And we had distributors all over the world, and, and uh, it was always uh, interesting and challenging. Uh, one of the trips I took was a, a trip to Japan. And I uh, spent some time in Tokyo and Osaka talking to talking to people, and found out they have some sources of natural zeolite there too, or clinotelite that that might be beneficial for them to use too. Uh, and we made a business decision not to go into business over there, but uh, uh, it was a very very uh, interesting it was a very very interesting trip, and uh, I hope to see them use a lot of natural zeolites to try to solve some of these problems and uh, get their get their Food, uh, food business back into uh, shape. But you check it out, you're going to find out that uh, uh, it, it's been added to uh, feedstocks for uh, all types of livestock, including chickens and, uh, you know, chickens and cattle for a long time. Uh, they can tolerate a 5 to 10 percent of the uh, food weight that they consume every day without any, uh, without any, um, any problems. Unlike sodium bentonite clay, uh, which has some toxicity at a, a smaller levels, and uh, yeah, you know, for uh, uh, for God's sakes, if this is uh, it's a product manufactured by God, and you don't get any better than that, and uh, it's got a purpose and a use, and uh, you might be able to save some lives. Uh, uh, God bless. Hang in there. Uh, yeah, just, just keep on going, folks. That's all we got. Bye-bye.